I will be talking mainly about two things. In the beginning, I'll be giving you some basic information about sleep, fairly simple stuff, and then we'll talk about uh, sleep apnea as one of the common sleep disorders. As you all know, most of our sleep comes in in one long stretch during the night. This is the way our clock is, internal clock is set. And it's very common in some cultures to have also supplemental nap in the afternoon. This is very normal in, in uh, most of the cultures. Unfortunately, it's not uh, considered as a normal thing here. Although our clock, as you would see, is really desi designed to allow us some quiet time, some downtime, if you, if you like, in the early afternoon. Uh, we record sleep by putting some electrodes on the brain. And we can record variety of brain waves. And with that, we're able to divide sleep into two major types. You've probably heard some of those terms, especially REM sleep stands for rapid eye movement sleep, and non-REM sleep. Uh, which is when the eyes really aren't moving in rapid fashion. Uh, as we drift from wakefulness into sleep, we transition into very early shallow sleep, then gradually into the deeper stages of sleep. These are the non-rapid eye movement sleep. Then in about an hour, an hour and a half, we get into a stage of rapid eye movement sleep. Then that cycle repeats itself all over again, and we get about maybe four cycles of that during the night. Uh, for the most adults, sleep requirements is anywhere between seven to nine hours. This seems to be the magic number. Actually, there are some variety of studies that showed both long sleepers, those who sleep more than nine hours, and short sleepers, particularly very short sleepers, maybe less than five hours of sleep, for some reason they have higher incidence of mortality. We have not really figured that out exactly why. Uh, uh, some of that mortality is related to cardiac disorders. Multiple medications can have significant adverse impact on sleep and sleep quality, and there are a variety of sleep disorders that can also affect that. Sleep apnea happens to be one of the most common sleep disorders that we encounter. To define some terms that you probably hear uh, often so you have a clear idea what, what they are, uh, we talk about obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea means there's complete stoppage of the breathing, or the breathing becomes very shallow because the upper airway, the airway in the neck, becomes narrowed or collapsed. I was talking about that segment probably here, only this yay segment here in the airway, uh, behind the tongue, basically. That airway should remain open during sleep. This way, air can move in and out of the lungs. It, it should flow easily. When that segment fails to maintain open, it collapses, then air does not flow into the lungs. So you see the person trying to breathe, but they cannot move the air in. So if the breathing stops completely, we call that apnea. If the breathing becomes very shallow, we call that hypopnea. There's another term that's called central sleep apnea. This is probably we see nine patients with obstructive sleep apnea before we see one patient with central sleep apnea. There are a variety of mechanisms or reasons for that, but the basic uh, 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 principle behind that is that the brain center here in this setting does not fire appropriate signals for the breathing system. Okay. So now the airway is open, there's no problem there, but the brain center is not sending adequate signals to the breathing muscles. So they, don't ha they have no reason to breathe. Okay, that goes on for 10, 20 seconds, maybe sometimes longer. Then the breathing center wakes up and fires those signals again. We call that central sleep apnea. We talk about something called obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. This is, uh, consists of a variety of things have to be met before we say someone has the sleep apnea syndrome. They have breathing stoppage, apneas, or shallow respiration, which is the hypopneas, and the arousals that happen at the end of each of these events. As the airway closes up, there's no air flowing in. The person can't breathe. So the sleep cycle has to be interrupted. They have to wake up briefly, open up that airway passage, let the air flow in, and go back to sleep. But as soon as they fall asleep, that cycle repeats itself again. So a lot of sleep disturbance associated with that. 
And as a consequence, there are a variety of daytime symptoms, including feeling very tired, very fatigued, falling asleep a lot, loss of concentration, mood disturbance, attention deficits, and variety of uh, uh, problems.